Good morning. Today is Sunday, June 21st, 2020. To all the fathers, grandfathers, stepfathers, big brothers, uncles, cousins, and even mothers playing the father's role, we say happy Father's Day. Also at this time, it is my honor and privilege on behalf of Pastor Milton Hobbs, the Antioch Baptist Church offices, its ministries, and its congregation to welcome you into our sanctuary. And we thank you for your attendance at today's service. We hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions about what goes on here at Antioch Baptist Church, please reach out to us at Antioch640.org. Once again, if you have any questions about what goes on here at Antioch Baptist Church, please reach out to us at Antioch640.org. Again, welcome to our sanctuary. Happy Father's Day. Welcome to Antioch Baptist Church Live. We hope you enjoy it. Have a great day and God bless you. To all the fathers that have the role and have taken the role of being a father. Happy Father's Day. God bless you. Happy Father's Day to you this morning. Thank you, dear. Um, this is a, a, a momentous occasion for many reasons, not just that it's Father's Day, but it is the day that the Lord has made. It is the day that we work, worship and recognize God. And so I would this morning just pause right here and to invite everyone on the call and anyone on the call and everyone on, 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 on our Facebook Live or however you are accessing this information this morning, I'm asking you this morning to please consider this, that there's no better gift to give to our God and Father than your heart this morning. This morning, we're going to pray with you and for you and, and with each other and for each other that we can most certainly uh, have God come into our lives, have God come into your life. The bottom line is that we want to see you saved this morning. We want to see you join the body of Christians. We want you to be one of us. And this morning, to do that, we need to come together in faith, come together as family, come together as people uh, that are believers, that people that trust and know that God is real. And so we're praying with you this morning. If there's one this morning that needs salvation, if there's one this morning that needs, oh God, God in their heart, won't you please consider the words we're going to say this morning. Consider the songs you've heard. Consider what you're feeling. That is not a, just an emotion. It is God pulling on the heartstrings of, of your soul compelling you and asking you, won't you please, sir, won't you please, ma'am, give your life to God this morning. And so with that, I ask that you join us in earnest prayer. Don't, won't you join this morning? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we all come free for you because we need you. Each and every one of us are desirous of you in our lives. We need a closer walk with you. We need more depth in your word. Oh, God, we need oh, your anointing to cover us and to shower us. And so this morning we pause for nothing else but to give you the glory and the honor that you so richly deserve. Oh, God, but in the event there's someone that doesn't know you in the pardoning of their sins, if there's someone this morning that is on the fence, that, that, that is not sure, we ask right now, oh, God, that the assurance of your spirit and your anointing touch them right now. Oh, God, that you envelop them, oh, God, and overshadow them with your anointing, with your power, and with your grace and mercy and love, even as you have done all of us. And with that, we're asking, you, if you're not sure this morning, won't you say this with me? And if you pray this prayer earnestly, God will come to your heart. Lord, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I acknowledge that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So there's no shame in being a sinner. But we all have failed God at some point. But I'm ready right now, oh God, to turn away from my sins, to repent of all my wrongdoing. Lord, and after doing that, and after giving my heart to you, I confess with my mouth that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And even more so, I believe in my heart, oh God, that you died on Calvary's cross, that you went to the tomb and you rose after that three days, 
with all power in your hand and that you're coming again for a church. You're coming again for your people. And I'm standing, waiting, asking, oh God, won't you save me? Let me be one of those that you saved, one of those that you're coming back for, one of the elect, one of the chosen. And if you've prayed that prayer with me this morning, I'm believing by faith that God is beginning a work in you right now. I'm believing that if you want a closer walk, the walk is coming. If you want salvation, salvation is yours for the asking. Did you ask this morning? For if you earnestly did, I congratulate you this morning. On this Father's Day, you gave your life to our God and Father. We're so grateful for that prayer, and we pray that in the master's name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. God bless you this morning. We want to favor you with a Father's Day uh, solo by none other than uh, our musician, uh, James White. Uh, Brother White, God bless you this morning for your contributions. And also, of course, the praise team, phenomenal. So we thank you guys for what you've done and are doing. There's going to be more coming from them. They worked so hard, so hard uh, these, this week, and they're going to bring beautiful music as well. So at this moment, let's be favored with this solo by um, um, James White. God bless you, sir. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, for grace. Thank you, Lord. Thanks so much. Isn't that wonderful? Didn't you just love that selection? It was just so beautiful. And, and apropos for this morning, for 
We're just celebrating Father's Day. Father's Day. And if you don't mind, I'd like to make a distinction. There are dads and there is our father. For this morning scripture, just w- it's one verse out of Matthew, at Matthew 6, 9. And when the disciples asked Jesus, well, Jesus, how should we pray? He began and he gave them words of eternal significance. For he said, this is how you should pray, how you should start every prayer, and how you should address the God of the universe with our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This morning, for a sermon title, I have Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Now, I know you know that comes with some baggage, right? For Now, you know how Mother's Day is. Everybody celebrates Mother's Day. I don't care how wonderful or unwonderful your mother may have been. Uh, you better not talk about anybody's mama. And so Mother's Day is celebrated. Restaurants are packed. Everybody is, is, is going through the rigors of buying gifts and just celebrating it at the grand scale. And then there's Father's Day. And it's pretty much uh, with very little fanfare, little hoopla. Yeah, yeah, we got to do it. Since we've celebrated mom, we got to do dad. And it's kind of, you know, they dump on dads. And, but that's okay. We can handle it. We were, we were made for that. Obviously, and it seems that there are people have all kinds of misgivings about dad, you know. And it's funny to me because you get those folks that said, well, my dad was absent. My dad, you know, wasn't there, and so they feel some kind of way. Then you have people that say, my dad was there, but he was always in my business, and he was always bothering me. Then you have some people say, well, my dad wasn't affectionate. He was there, but he never told me he loved me, and he never did anything, and they have a problem. Then you have other people say, my dad was too clingy, and he's always on me. I wish he would just back off. And so I'm finding that there's no happy medium, that it's hard to be that perfect dad uh, to everybody. And so most of the time, dads just pick a position. If you're smart, this is what you do. You pick a position, and you stay right there. And sooner or later, your children will come back to where you are, um, by and by. And the reason I bring up this distinction is because when Jesus was talking and he was telling us to pray, he unified us with these words that says, our father. And as long as we have that father, the maker of the universe, the creator of all the worlds, of, of all the planets, of all the stars, the creator of this world and and all the animals and the vegetation, the creator of our souls who breathed life into us and brought life to man, that is our father. Everybody else, they're dads, yes. They, 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 they started a, our life form. But who gave us life, true life and eternal life, was none other than our father in heaven. And we make this distinction this morning because we very often attribute some of the things that happen in our lives to people in our lives that didn't do what we thought they should do or may have done what they shouldn't have done. We attribute the things in our lives today because we have expectations that were not fulfilled. We have dreams and aspirations that I would be better if you had done that. If you had just given me that Christmas gift I feel more secure about myself. If you had done this, that, and the other, that I wouldn't have this void. But this morning, there is a wonderful revelation even in the void. Oh, I wish somebody could learn to praise God even in the midst of the storm. For even in your void, there is a reason to rejoice. Even in your void, there are reasons why that we should praise God and our God, our Father, and give him all the praise and honor and the glory. Let, let me begin by saying this. Uh, there, in my life, my dad was a wonderful father. He was there. He was, he was, you know, he was a good provider. He brought food in and money. But my dad was one-dimensional. You have never met a person more one-dimensional than my father. He was a pastor, 
and that was it. He knew about church, but if you ask him about how to fix a car, he don't know that. If you ask him about camping or going outside, I've never seen him plant a flower. I never saw him go to the beach. He didn't swim. He didn't bowl. He didn't play sports. He didn't do anything. I was like, Dad, you got to do more than church. To him, life was church, and church was life. And I appreciate that about him, for I learned so much. But there was a void in me because I had other interests. I had other things that I needed to do. My brothers and I used to complain, you didn't come to our games. If you didn't see me run track, you didn't see me play football, and you weren't there for us during the times that were important to us. And so we thought in our minds that we missed something, that other kids had something we didn't. While we had other kids that said, well, at least your dad was there. And mine wasn't even there for those moments. And we would all sit around and lament about what we're missing. But you know what the biggest thing we were missing? We were missing the point that when something is not in your life, when you have a hole in your soul, it is not going to be another person that fills it. God says, hey, I'm your father. I'm here. And God fills those voids. I began to think about my own life and look at, and I, I started a list the other day of all the people that were in my life that have now gone on glory, all the men that were in my life. I got up to about 49, 51, something like that, of men that were actually in my life that imparted important things to me that are dead now, that, that have gone on, but they left such an indelible mark on my life that when I needed the most, God brought them in. When I, when, when I wanted to go fishing, my dad did fish, but my uncle William came and he taught me how to fish. I'm so grateful for him. And we had many moments that I, if dad had a fish, I would have never had with Uncle William and gotten his thing. You, are you following what I'm saying? Um, I laugh all the time with my favorite uncle, uh, my uh, Uncle Bernard. And he taught me uh, what he, maybe he shouldn't have, but he taught me as a young man what it meant to go to the car with, your, with the red cup. And why are, we, why are the guys always leaving the girls door, the barbecue going to the back of the trunk? And so he taught me what it meant to go to the back of the trunk with the big boys and to learn and to how to talk and how to relate to the other men. And he was a funny guy, and he was always having a great time. And even in the midst of all my life, I appreciate his teaching. Uh, not so much the Red Cup, but I, teach, I appreciate all the things he left. And had I been one-dimensional, I would have never gotten those things. And so God, all my life, filled me with important things from what? From dads. All of my life, I've had some dads in my life. They weren't necessarily my biological father. He did what he could do. But God said, that's not enough. And so he sent to me men after his own heart, men that loved him. Men, some of them flawed, some of them having uh, uh, difficulties in their lives, but I watched them and I grew from them and I learned. And why did he do that? He did that expressly and it's just for me to be standing here today to be talking to you. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost even in this place. He's telling me even at this moment that there's someone that now is my turn to be somebody's dad. It's my turn to, uh, to give the love that was given to me. It's my turn now to show comfort, to show love, to show affection, to show wisdom and guidance. It is my turn now. And I am so grateful that he's called me to that. Yes, I have my own children, and I love them dearly. I'm expecting they all should call this morning sometime or else. But <laughs> I digress. <laughs> that I'm expecting them to, to talk to them. I'm expecting them to do something about because I am their dad. But you know, children, I would be... Uh, if you forgot me altogether, I'd be okay as long as you still told me and I knew for sure that, listen, I was doing the work of my father. Uh, it's okay to do the work of your dad. And, and sometimes I'm crazy, so don't. sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm not. I admit it that I, I'm quirky th in that regard. But guess what? Who's not quirky? Guess who's always right? Guess who knows the right from wrong? You get your father in heaven. And it's time for us to be about our father's business. It's time for us to give him praise and to give him the glory and to give him his due. I don't know this morning. I know we are saying happy Father's Day, and I know what it means to many fathers. It, it means the world to me for my children to call and just say that. You don't have to give me another tie. You don't have to give me any gifts. But just to know that you're all right, just to know that, that, that you're doing fine makes my heart happy. Well, you know what? 
The same is true of our Father in heaven. Just to know that you emulating his son. Just to know, oh God, that you have Jesus in, in your life. That you have Christ on the inside. Can you imagine the God of the universe? And this was, is what blows my mind. The God of the universe that made everything has put aside a time to reflect on you and on me. Wait, can I say that again? The God that created everything, everything that's created, and everything that you see and don't see, every universe, every star, every galaxy, that that God, that guy right there, has taken time out of the entire universe to myopically look down on this one little planet Earth and find you in the middle of your home or your wherever you are at this moment and to love you. And to say, uh, how are you doing this morning? He, he stopped and gave you breath. No, let him have another day. Let her have another day. He's taken and protected you from heart, harm, and danger countless times, more times than any of us could even imagine. That God loves you. And I would be remiss if we didn't take a second out of this day while I'm thinking my dearly uh, uh, beloved father, my late father, and while I'm thinking all the men in my life that have done so many wonderful, marvelous things, I do appreciate it. Those who are alive, those who have passed, I am a composite of everything that they put in me, and I'm now trying to just get that out to the world. But you know what? I would be remiss. I would be less than a true son if I didn't just take a second and say, Lord, Heavenly Father, <laughs> our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, I love your name. I praise your name. I worship you in spirit and in truth. I give my all to you. Oh, my goodness. Can you imagine that God is smiling at us? When he sees the reflection of his son in us, when he sees the reflection of Christ Jesus upon us, when he sees us walking like Christ and talking like Christ, he smiles and says it's okay. When Jesus comes and he says, Father, they're with me. Uh, I'm interceding for them. Uh, I, I, I'm standing in their stead. When, he's done, when we do that, we're walking in the newness of life, so much so that he's given us eternal life on the other side. Isn't that beautiful? Now, what kind of father is that? Listen, we don't always agree with our natural fathers, do we? There's times that you have blow-ups. And there's <laughs> times it's like, listen, I can't take it anymore. You know what? There are times we do the same thing with our Heavenly Father, don't we? There's a time we say, listen, uh, we, don't, we might not tell everybody, but there, in our hearts, there are times we've had disagreement. I don't know why you did what you did, sir, but I'm not happy about that. I don't know why I'm being treated the way I am. And we don't always understand God's ways. You know what? I have news for you. God's not going to change <laughs> because he's that dad. He's that father that, does, that knows what's best for us. And when, while we're ranting and raving, like spoiled children, he lets us go through that. Why? Because he knows, trust me, the pathway I have for you is better than what you have for yourself. The things I have in store for you are beyond your comprehension. If you could just hold on and mature in me. Oh, now, I, many times I thought my dad was crazy. Now I look back and say, he was so right. Because now I've matured. I, I've experienced some things, and I understand what he was talking about when I didn't. Well, can you imagine how much more God knows than our natural fathers? And yes, you're going through some things. It's okay. He's with you. You're suffering some things. It's okay. He's with you. Don't worry about it. God is with you. He is your father. He will never leave or forsake you. He'll be with us, what, until the end of the age, until the end of the ages. We will be with him forevermore. So this morning, even in my closing, I just want to say, Let's take a second and just say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Lord. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, we are just so grateful for this opportunity to come together as family. This is a family reunion this morning that we come, that we shower you with our love, that we shower you with our affection, with our songs of praise. So we thank you for those who have come and given us praise. We thank you for the, the gifting that you placed in our midst. And we thank you most of all for those who have come to the altar this day. 
We're rejoicing with angels. I'm believing somebody gave their life today. If not, Lord, what are we doing if we're not saving souls? What are we doing if we're not attracting, oh God, and compelling men and women to be saved? And so, Lord, we know that your word, you promised that your word would not return to you void, but it will accomplish that with which you sent it. And so I'm now believing and trusting and knowing it has done it. And we're rejoicing along with you that another child has joined the family. And we thank you now as a unified body. We give you praise, honor, and glory. And we say, happy Father's Day, Lord, our God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless y'all this morning. I love all of you with the love of Jesus Christ. And we will see you on next Sunday. Don't forget, prayer, 7 a.m., 7 p.m., every day, every day, 7, go to Antioch640.org. Get all the information about what we're doing, Vacation Bible School, don't forget them, Sunday School, and all the other schools that we have going on, whatever other activities. we got a bunch of activities going on. Please uh, be mindful, go to uh, antioch 640 dot org and get all the information about what we're doing. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you.